I'll step it up a notch, use that same dough, but make something worthy of being on display in a bake shop window, an elegant filled Danish braid. I've got a dried fruit filling and a cream cheese filling. So let me get started on the fillings first. Half a cup of prunes, half a cup of raisins, and half a cup of dried cranberries. And additionally, I like a little bit of candied citrus peel, a quarter cup. You can use any dried fruits you wish, just so long as you've got a cup and a half in total. I will add a bit of orange zest. And I might as well make use of the orange and add some juice as well. And then for an added bit of flavor, cinnamon and ginger. Half a teaspoon of each. And I'll just give this a stir to combine it. Just set that aside. Now to make the cream cheese filling, I have half a package, so 125 grams of softened cream cheese. Two tablespoons of sugar. A little splash of vanilla and then an egg yolk lends the perfect amount of set. And I'm saving the white to use for a special topping I'm going to add a little later. I'm just stirring to make sure it's nice and smooth. There we go, set that aside, and now it's time to roll the pastry. I've got a half recipe of the Danish dough, and my goal here is to roll this into a rectangle. It's about 10 by 15 inches. So once again, I do like to trim my edges just to make a dessert like this precise. It's time to cut the braids. I wanna just make a mark at a third and two thirds down the dough. Cut off at 45 degrees at the top. And then you make basically chevron marks down the side. The first filling to go down the center is the cream cheese filling. And then you spoon the dried fruits on top. Now this is the fun part, to do the braiding. First you tuck in at the top, and I give it a little pinch down, and then you start overlapping and you wanna pull each piece of the braid over and all the way to the other side. Get a little frame and then those last few pieces get tucked right underneath. Like so. Now to get it on the baking tray, line it with parchment. Carefully lift it up and onto the tray. Oh, beautiful. But now it has to rest 90 minutes and then it's ready for the oven. So I'll cover that up and I have one that's ready to go. And just like those individual danishes, you wanna brush this with an egg wash to promote that browning and the shine. It's amazing how that dough really does expand as it sits for that 90 minutes. Here we go. Now this is ready for the oven, which I've preheated to 375, and this will take 30 minutes to bake until it's a beautiful, rich, golden brown. I'm not going to finish this with apricot glaze when it's out of the oven. I've got some special decorations in mind. Here we go. The filled Danish braid is out of the oven and cooled, and it looks fantastic. Instead of going for an apricot glaze, I have two elements I'd like to add to this braid to decorate it on top. Sugared almonds and a simple icing sugar glaze. Now, I'll start with the sugared almonds. It starts with an egg white, and I'm just going to whisk it. It's room temperature. It's actually the egg white I saved from the filling I made earlier. 
There we go. At this point, I'll add two tablespoons of sugar. We put a lot of work and time into the Danish pastry. Let's keep this simple and quick. And I've got a cup of sliced almonds. And I add those and just stir them to coat. I've got a parchment lined baking tray. And spread them out. That way they'll toast up evenly. These take no time to bake. 12 to 15 minutes in a 375 oven. I have some that are already baked and cooled. And this is what I mean about how they cluster together. And then you just break them into pieces. Now, of course, I can't sprinkle these right on top of my filled Danish braid because they would just fall right off. That's where the icing sugar glaze comes in. Half a cup of sifted icing sugar, a tablespoon of milk, and just with a fork, stir it together. There we go. I'll bring the cooled braid over and then just use the fork. Just let it drizzle over top. Nice little crumbling of the almonds. There we go. And doesn't that look stunning? It truly is a showpiece. And reveal that filling with the cheese layer. This is elegant enough to eat with a fork, but forget it. I'm just gonna eat it with my hands. 